Okay, so there's a couple of questions on Discord about the style and meaning section on task 1C. So just thought I'd very, very quickly rattle through how to approach that. So it's comparing style across, so take style and meaning separately. You're comparing style across three promos and you're comparing meaning across the three promos. So all we're doing is looking for um, <clears throat> ways they are similar and ways that they are different. So first of all, it's kind of attempt to define style and meaning. I am not a film teacher, so don't judge me too harshly on this. But the way I see it, the way I've been treating it is that style is something distinct from genre. It's similar to genre, but it's not the same thing. It's kind of defined more by the overall general approach, so the general um, technique, <clears throat> so the cinematography and lighting, that kind of thing, the, the sort of the, the general approach. So it could be um, arty, it could be made to feel uh, really homemade, or it could have a noir feel, it could be realistic. So these things are similar to uh, genre, but they're not really the same thing. So the examples I've got on the right-hand side here, um, 50 points for identifying those. So we've got the Blair Witch Project at the top and Us by Jordan Peele, which is a recent horror film. So these are both in the same genre. They're both horror films, but they both have completely different um, styles. Okay, they have a completely different approach to the same genre. Blair Witch is all found footage, so um, handheld video camera, whereas you can tell even just by the ratio of the, the, the screen resolution here, you know, this is a very cinematic, very, um, colorful, uses a lot of symbolism, um, uses a lot of, you know, standard cinema, um, cinematography techniques, okay? It could also relate to the narrative style. So some uh, films, most films kind of stick to the classical ho Hollywood narrative that you learned with um, Laura and Emma when you were doing unit one. Um, but then, you know, some films are run from the end to the beginning, they run backwards, or some films don't have a linear um, narrative structure, such as Pulp Fiction. Um, and another way of thinking about the style is to keep it kind of specific to the style of promotional um, AV video. Okay, so Norton posted <clears throat> this uh, YouTube video if educational videos were filmed like music videos. So I highly recommend you watch that because um, it breaks down some of the uh, stylistic choices that are fair, have become fairly standard within a music video. Because of course, these um, cinematography techniques are kind of designed to be invisible. So if you're not analyzing this stuff all the time, you're not really noting it down. All oh, the views that are really um, extreme close-up shot here because they want to emphasize the uh, emotions of this character at this point. Right? It, you tend not to note these things down, so it's kind of strange to break out from that passive way of consuming media and start pulling out specific methods. Okay, so meaning, um, it, it could be related to theme. It could be, if, if you've got an overall theme, some films, many films, many music videos will perhaps have an overall meaning or theme. So this is about generally about love or it's about the end of the world or it's about the political situation in America or whatever. There may be a distinct theme, but it, it doesn't necessarily need to be about that. It could be about um, using specific techniques. So looking at the ways that these videos that you've been analyzing are uh, communicating information to the audience through things like shot type. So I don't know if you can see this, um, very clearly, I suppose I should present. Uh, just thought I'd, I'd drop myself in here while we work through these slides. Familiar face. Um, so yeah, what was I saying? It could be about specific shot types. Um, so things like an extreme wide shot. I think we talked about this during Unit 1 at the start of Star Wars. You know, we are introduced to Star Force Awakens. We're introduced to Rey. Um, with these huge extreme wide shots and uh, you know it's placing her in the location but it's also hinting that uh, at her vulnerability uh, and how small she is in the 
um, vastness of this epic landscape. So, you know, wide shots, they have a very specific meaning. They're, you know, the directors, cinematographers make these decisions for a reason. None of this stuff happens accidentally. Um, or it could be that a close-up is... Um, is more intimate, so they're, they're, they're making suggestions of intimacy um, or giving uh, importance to what that character is saying or doing at that point. So it's maybe we're just focusing on that um, to emphasize uh, the action there. Um, or we could be using a, a, a tilted camera angle or, or, or type of shot to um, maybe feel more chaotic or tense. Um, we've talked already about up shots and down shots, the differences here in terms of how um, it, um, how much importance it places on the character, it places on the character. So if you're shot from below, you maybe feel a bit more, that character maybe feels a bit more, more vulnerable, smaller, defenseless on the receiving end of something. Whereas if you're shot from above, you know, like Batman in every single shot, then we feel a bit more important, it's a bit more dramatic. It's a bit more threatening. So these are all the sorts of things you're going to be using in your E4 uh, projects. You're going to have to consider, do I want to introduce my character at the beginning of my animation? And do I want to, what is it I want to say about how the environment is impacting on this character? Does the character feel very small or is it a, is it a, is he big and powerful? Are we going to um, take up the whole screen with the character's head or are we going to use a huge wide shot? So, this is more about the specific techniques that are used, like the shot types, um, colors, the uh, mise-en-scene. So what is it that we actually see in the frame? Is it, um, are, are there um, props from uh, you know, a different time? Is that just suggesting that this takes place in Victorian time? Uh, or you know, is it just establishing the location? Oh, there's a bar and, and some um, bottles of alcohol. We're in a pub. Okay, it's just about how do we understand what's going on in the frame. It could be about editing. So is there long shots that feel really um, relaxed and laid back and gentle? Or is it very quick? Um, is there a quick succession of, of um, jump cuts that feels more um, intense or, or dramatic? Okay, so think about also the meaning behind the uh, objects in the scene and the action that's happening. What is um, the the connotations? What's been suggested about the things that we can see there? Um, I'm assuming you know the difference between denotation. So denotation is specifically what we see. So this is a rose, which you know that's the, the denotation is there's a, a red rose. The connotations might be the uh, of um, love, or it could be about um, War um, and, and blood. You know, roses have different connotations to different people, so perhaps not the best example. But you know, denotation is what the specific thing we see. The connotations are what is being suggested by that. Uh, given other contextual information, right? How do I skip? Whoa, that's some uh, high-res graphics there. Compare. We're going to compare these things. So we've got to compare, not style and meaning but compare the three different styles. So I think as Laura said earlier, you should have three quite different promos, with different target audiences, different genres. So therefore there should be quite different styles within that. This example of a Venn diagram has two um, items to compare here. You're, you're comparing three, so you can do a Venn diagram with three circles, and I want you to try and list the stylistic differences and the stylistic similarities, okay? So the similarities go in the overlapping areas and the differences go in their, in the own, in their own sort of unique um, areas within the circle, okay? So whales and fish, but both live in water, have fins and they can swim, but they are different in terms of Wheels have hair, blah, blah, blah. Right, you get the idea. Do a Venn diagram, at the very least, list down all the similarities in your three videos, and then list down all the differences. Um, use comparison words, words that are used to connect. So similarly, comparable in the same way, likewise, however, whereas, 
they're, they're not on the list. Similar to, in common, as well as, just like all that stuff, right? So come back to this, Google it yourself, comparison words, compare and contrast words. All right, you'll probably find a better um, resource yourself. So that's what I would do. Um, let's very quickly go through an exemplar. Um, so this one is a little bit on the general side. What I would recommend is you give yourself a style heading and write about style. And then I would give yourself a meaning heading. I think this student has actually split it between style and meaning. So give yourself a meaning heading and write about meaning. So style-wise, watch this. So this student is comparing uh, Post Malone. Don't know what that means. Birds of Prey, a Harley Quinn superhero movie versus uh, the BBC One Swimming Hippos, which I'm sure we've all seen. So style-wise, the first thing that's different between the three promos is the cinematography. In both the music video and Harley Quinn trailer, there are a variety of shots used, such as close-ups, long shots, high angle, um, and more. However, the BBC, okay, so connecting comparison words. However, the BBC One Hippo Ident has only two types of shot within the promo. This is because it is a lot shorter than the other two promos. That's one reason. Um, also, stylistically, it's different. So there are not a lot of camera angles needed in the short space of time. Um, yeah, not bad. But even in thirty seconds, you could have you could have fifteen two second shots. It would have a very different meaning. It would be a bit mental, but it you know it would work. The use of just two camera angles, shot types, also keeps the simplicity of the ident so it's easy to follow and does its job, telling the audience of the upcoming program. Um, remember, the purpose of an ident is to create a brand identity. It's not necessarily to tell the audience, but there would be and some narration on this BBC one ident. Some non-diegetic sound. I'm picking this stuff up. Another difference between the three promos is the costumes. Post Malone has a very old style of costume due to it being set in the past. So what does that what does that suggest? That's he's missed an opportunity there to say that um, we have very specific costumes that is um, that is suggesting to the audience the time um, the, the time period this is set, which is sometime between the 1950s and 80s. So he has gone on to talk about that, although in quite general terms. Uh, the main character becomes a zombie after dying during the video. Uh, yeah, the rest of this is a little bit waffly. Let's skip past that. I've got another one we'll, we'll look at very quickly. Another way in which the three promos differ in style is the use of sound. The music video has some diegetic sound, such as inaudible screams, and shouting during the fight scene. So this is sound coming from characters in the um, in the video. But apart from that, all the rest of the video contains no sound other than the music for the music video. The trailer has a mix of both diegetic and non-diegetic. So there's a, a different a difference. So the, the music video is all diegetic. I mean, I suppose apart from the music that it's promoting, um, but the, tra the trailer has this this distinct combination of diegetic and non-diegetic, because presumably there's somebody doing a voiceover along with the backing music. This is done to both show off parts of the film and then have backing music, which makes the film seem more intense and fast paced. BBC One Ident has a small amount of diegetic sound, which is the water moving and the hippo dive. So a lot, a lot of description here. Um, the, so you're reiterating everything that you've you've discussed already. Like the inf you should have all the information there. You're just kind of pulling it back out again and looking for similarities and differences. The only other pieces of sound come from the backing music and voiceover, uh, who says what program will be next. Despite the differences, all three promos have music. So nice similarity there. The music video has the actual music that it's promoting. Harley Quinn has some backing music, and BBC One Ident has some calming background music when the hippo swims. Okay, let's just have a look at this one quickly. Um, I haven't made anything bold here. Um, what are we comparing? This is the Genius by LSD, the uh, Women in Black trailer, horror film, and 
the so very distinct styles and then the the white cliffs ah yeah this one okay <clears throat> All right, so let's have a look. All the three promos that I have analyzed are very different and target very different styles. So if you've chosen three very different promos with different target audiences and different styles, this shouldn't really be that hard. Um, the genre and the themes of the three promos are contrasting, making them very different from one another. The music video for Genius is based from the genre of fantasy, includes strong themes of surrealism and psychedelia, playing into the idea of the name of the collaboration. Uh, therefore, the general visuals are over the top, energetic, colorful, as well as including codes and conventions such as magical or supernatural elements, which are present in the video through the surreal details. And then going into specific information here, the woman in black, however, okay, so connecting words is from the horror genre and therefore includes much darker elements than both Genius and the Channel 4 Ident, such as jump scares, ghosts, fear, blood, screams, as well as children, motifs to add creepiness to the trailer, including creepy moving toys, children's voices, to solidify the horror theme. The Channel 4 Ident, however, has solid themes of diversity and travel. Therefore, the general feel and style is calming and peaceful. Uh, the music video used a very bright color scheme. Mm-hmm. which is the complete opposite. So there's the connection to the women in black. The visuals in the women in black are very desaturated, so not intense colors. Very, very different indeed, stylistically. Okay, the very colorful, psychedelic to the very desaturated and um, gray, creepy atmosphere. I think it's almost black and white, the women in black. The pace also represents different meanings for the promos. The Women in Black trailer, the pace of the editing, the clips gets faster and faster, so it's building up some tension, complements the horror genre. However, the Channel 4 ident has a slow and steady and an equal pacing, connoting the idea of stability and security. Okay, it's gentle, it's calm, it's focused, which direct, directly relates to the theme of encouraged di diversity in the UK, as well as creating a calming and relaxing atmosphere. So very different stylistic choices, creating a different feel. All right. Moreover, moreover, the different use of sound and music in the promos creates different meanings and atmospheres and helps to represent the genres. The non-diegetic background music of the ident is chilled. It connotes peace. Contrastingly, there's another connecting word. Okay, so contrastingly, whereas, however, the atmospheric, instrumental, non-diegetic music in Women in Black, however, starts off light and mysterious. Uh, however, as the trailer speeds up, the music becomes darker and more and more distorted. Frantic, that's a good word. That's the word I was looking for earlier on. Short jump cuts. Okay. Symbolizing, connoting, suggesting fear. It's a very different purpose, very different stylistic um, treatment, very different meaning. Furthermore, at some points in the trailer, the background music completely cuts out to leave dramatic silence. The music for Genius, however, has absolutely nothing to do with the video, apart from the occasional references such as visualized genius, geniuses. The randomness of the video, as well as other elements such as the jarring color scheme against the song, symbolizes the surreal and, and, and random uncontrollable effects. So we could have done with our, tying that up with one or two final kind of connecting words to, to compare these, but um, there we go. All right, so I think the main advice would be the Venn diagram. Make sure you understand how we're defining style and meaning, and then get yourself uh, a Venn diagram with three circles, promo one, promo two, promo three. Do that first. I'm sure you can do this on Canva or draw.io. I'm sure you'll be able to find that somewhere. All right, any more questions, um, get in touch, please. Thank you.